everybody how's it going welcome to another episode of the uh, dc universe annotated podcast now today uh just to get our topics out of the way before we kind of you know get into the the i guess pre-topic stuff so we are going to be talking about one woman 1984 going to hbo max it's probably the biggest news um altogether just because it's a huge surprise then after that we're going to talk about some of the new information and the trailer we received for the Zack snyder or justice league director's cut uh trailer which will be coming on hbo max next year then green lantern hbo max show details for the characters specifically and last but not least this interesting news about a wonder girl series that will be reportedly I guess go to CW more likely than not, but it'll be featuring a Latina Wonder Woman, which is definitely very interesting. So yeah, those are our topics for today. And I guess before we get into it, um, you know, it'd be terrible of me to not introduce the person I'm joined by or joined with today. Jorge, how are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you today? You know, it's it's really early for me. So I, um, you know, I got my coffee um i'm hoping i don't look too bummish today uh you know for those who are watching the video segments and stuff like that since i'll be on cam for it but you know i'm wearing my superman man of steel inspired hat just that so i have something dc you know what i mean um it was either that or i wear a pink hoodie but i didn't really think the pink hoodie kind of conveyed dc so <laughs> i wanted to do um to at least wear something that had dc characters or something on it um but yeah, that's how I'm doing. Um, I mean, I guess before we really get into any topics, you know, which topic most interests you so far? Like before we get into it, uh, really, um, I'm really curious to talk about the Wonder Woman 1984 release because it's very interesting that they that they chose to release it through HBO Max because it kind of feels like like a like a last resort for them, but you know, just uh. Yeah, it's very interesting how they did that. They did that move. Yeah, and and if anyone hears like that crying noise in the background, that's just my cat. She's uh she's been very needy lately, so she I don't know for whatever reason she just she does that when she plays. I guess like you know like the toy mice or whatever. Like she have like a toy mi- like toy mouse in her uh a toy mouse in her mouth. And she'll just be like running around crying left and right. Um, it's it, it, you'll, you'll think she's dying or something, you know. Um, but anyways, let's just get right into it. So HBO Max decided to put to our next topic, which is about Green Lantern. Now, we have some in, we have a few inf- information related things about this series. Uh, one character descriptions, but two, supposedly the villains uh, were revealed for this series, which will be the Dominators, which is kind of interesting. So um, essentially, um, it's it's interesting because uh, one, I don't know if you saw this, but this TV series got a mature rating, or at least that's the intended rating for it. So they're not holding anything back on it. So I guess we'll get, uh, it says likely due to profanity and violence. So that's really interesting. Um, at the same time, it looks like we'll get the Dominators, um, which I'm pretty sure have appeared in the Arrowverse. I think they were one of the first crossovers. I'm pretty sure they were one of the first like crossovers for the Arrowverse, so basically like alien invaders. Um, I guess it makes sense that they would be involved because it would explain how they would probably connect Earth, the human Green Lanterns, and then just in general, Green Lanterns. Um, but for the character descriptions, just to knock that out of the way, Guy Gardner is described. And from what it sounds like, this series will take place across multiple time periods. But Guy Gardner is described as a white male in his 30s, a hulking mask of ma- or hulking mass of masculinity. Um, just like in the comics, he's a personification of hyper patriotism found in the 80s that birthed you know, movies that starred Hulk Hogan, Rambo, etc. Um, he's so likable. He may act foolish, but he's not a fool. He loves his daughter and wife with all of his hard partying, fast driving, hot tempered heart. And he's described as like an alpha male personality that is a deep undercurrent of pain driving at all. Um, then you have Alan Scott, white male, 28 years old. Uh, from the outside, he is the model of the early 1940s, the image of a G man. 
Um, he's handsome, clean-shaven, well-dressed, without a hair out of place. He has spent his young life trying to personify truth, justice, the American way. Um, he was already a household name in L.A. and is seen as a hero thanks to positive press coverage. However, uh, for all of Alan's honesty, there is one huge lie that follows him. The fact that he is a gay man. A fact that in his era could cost him his job or even his life. Um, and then last but not least, the new original character, Brie Jarda, a female in her 30s. Um, they say that she is half human, half alien, with her mom being an alien, her father being a human. Um, she was raised on a more enlightened planet within advanced society. She outworked her peers to earn her ring and found herself partnered with Guy Gardner. Um, and her superpower supposedly is superhuman hearing. Even though, you know, they may, they may broaden that eventually to just be in general senses or something. Um, but that is the character descriptions. And I really read that in a really rough way, so apologies. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bummed out. I just think I was really hoping we were going to get – we might have talked about this before, but I was really hoping we were going to get, like, the Simon Baz, Jessica Cruz, you know, buddy cop film – or not film, but TV series with maybe, I mean, like a Guy Gardner mentoring them would be cool, I think. That would probably work out well. Um, but I'm kind of bummed out that, like, I mean, if if this is going to be, like, our three our three characters are following, um, I mean, I, I'm going to reserve judgment, but I just thought, for some reason this whole time, I thought we were going to end up getting, like, a Simon Baz, Jessica Cruz thing. Um, since I assumed they were going to leave Hal Jordan and John Stewart from the movies. And um, I don't know. I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to let you let you take it away. Um, yeah, just like you said, like he took the words out of my mouth. Like, I'm kind of bummed that we're not getting like the Simon Bass, Jessica Cruz, like type buddy cop uh, show that we wanted. But I, I, I still kind of have my hopes high for this show because of, being a Green Lantern fan, like I do want to see the show succeed. I do want to see it do well, and I do think like this show is kind of like a is kind of like I said before with like the whole DC trying to like revamp the whole new way of entertaining people, storytelling to people. Because I believe I read somewhere that this actually is somewhat part of the Arrow uh, universe, so. So I think we are we could there's potential to see connections with these characters with Arrowverse characters as well. So I think that's that's a highlight I guess of this show so far. But yeah. I don't know about that. I don't know. Only thing, only thing I can think of right now. Yeah, I mean it, it is produced by Greg Berlanti who produces yeah, yeah. all the various like CWDC shows. Um, I mean you know even shows like Black Lightning which wasn't set in the Arrowverse per se, like it was technically in its own different universe. And then Supergirl, you know, that was also produced by Greg Berlanti, but it was in its own separate universe. Yeah. Those eventually, you know, with time, with crossovers, you know, those are all now in the same, I guess, singular universe after the recent crisis event they did on CW. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if that happened with this show, to be honest. I kind of hope this show, though, can just do its own thing um, just because, I mean, the CW has done a lot for the DC characters. I'm not going to feel like they haven't in terms of definitely help kind of jumpstart the popularity of some characters that were forgotten at times. And, um, you know, just keeping certain characters in the limelight, so to speak, like Green Arrow, for example. But I mean, to be totally honest, if this is supposed to be a part of the CW verse, I'm actually really shocked they're not following up on the tease they did where Diggle basically was set up to be that universe's version of Jon Stewart in a lot of ways. Cause I think they announced that his real name is like John Diggle Stewart or something like that. Um, and then I think the end of arrow, he finds a green lantern ring. So if, if this is in the arrow verse and they don't follow up on that, I'll actually be kind of disappointed at the same time. I'm going to reserve a lot of judgment until the show actually comes out, but I just hope, I just hope it's good to be honest. I hope it's really good. They said the, um, the original character is going to deal with like racism and stuff. Um, 
So, I mean, we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see what happens. It could be like in a way, like, I mean, I just started watching T Titans and forgive me. So, but um, I remember I'm up to the part where they just introduced Doom Patrol. And like when I, when they like talked about the chief, I was like, I was expecting the same character as the Doom Patrol character. And it was a totally different guy. So, and again, I haven't seen the whole show. So I don't know if it's like supposed to be like a fake guy or anything or fake chief or anything. So it could be kind of like that where it's like, it's the same, and I say in air quotes, the same universe where they introduce like the same characters and whatnot, but it's different actors. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, it could be like in that kind of format. And also to go back what you mentioned about like how this could be like a, almost like a time looping uh, show where we go back in time and see what is another character's point of perspective. I kind of feel like, just from you saying that, I kind of feel like this is basically going off Doom Patrol, the show itself, because that's what it does. It's like connecting stories from the past and, and connect those to stories from the past to the future. So I guess that's what they're kind of going for with all the Green Lantern characters, especially because like when when this list of characters were introduced, they were it, it, it was weird because it was like one from the 1940s or like golden ages of comics and then modern day green lanterns so it's very interesting that that that's how it's going to be and i think it's gonna be very interesting to see how the green lantern of old connects to the green lantern of the new yeah i mean i i think it'll be really cool to connect it um at the same time they it'd be cool for them to maybe make a joke or something or explain why there's so many earth ones yeah um just because it's not like Earth is the like it's not like Earth is like an intergalactic empire, you know what I mean? It's it's a small singular planet compared to like a lot of the other aliens in DC Comics. So I'll definitely be curious to see how they explain that. Also, if they even reference you know like a Hal or a John or a Kyle or you know whatever. Um, but I'm gonna reserve judgment. I'm I'm still a little bummed out about the character reveals, but I mean, yeah, I mean. I'm not a writer, so I mean, the show could be amazing. You know what I mean? I'm sure a lot of people said similar things about Watchmen um, That's you true. Know, before that series came out. So you never know. But I mean, do you have any final thoughts on the, the Green Lantern stuff before we turn it over to the last topic? Uh, yeah, just uh, I have high hopes for it, but uh, it also looks like we're not going to get like anything any other news for it for a while because I just saw right now actually that they're not they may not start filming till April of 2021. Yeah, so uh, it may be a while for the show to come out too. Maybe a Greenland, but it's gonna be a while. Wow, I mean, I guess I'm not surprised with everything going on. Um, yeah, and actually, this kind of but yeah, that's about it for this episode. Uh, thanks for checking it out. Um, let us know what topic was your favorite and your guys' thoughts about each topic as well because. I mean, we covered like a variety of different things. I mean, in hindsight, I think my favorite topic is probably this TV show that we were yeah. talking about, the Wonder Girl TV show, just because it's such a new character. Um, there's no definitive canon, so to speak. So you could do whatever you want. Um, right. which is kind of refreshing, honestly. Um, you know, you don't have any situations where any decision you make with Barry or Iris, like in the Flash show, Fans will be upset because you're contradicting this or that. Same thing for Arrow. Um, I mean, you have none of that baggage, basically, which was kind of nice. But, I mean, what do you think? What was your favorite topic? Uh, personally, my favorite topic was actually the, the Wonder Woman 1984, just because, like, I think it's just a great direction that DC is taking with uh, the way they're going to release movies and potentially other, other movies in the future, just to, like, get the hype up for HBO Max because – uh hbo i i've been an hbo guy since like i don't know how long like it's filled with great shows all that kind of stuff and i'm super glad like dc is coming to the platform and i think wonder woman's just a just a really great like introduction for more uh dc fans to uh, welcome to the to the platform nice nice all right cool well thanks for checking out this episode everybody and we'll see you guys next week see you guys